Mm-hmm. Well, you Nico Williams. That's right. It's your boy. Coming at you on a Thursday as I always love to do. Why? Well, Thursday's my favorite day of the week. Why? Well, I was born on a Thursday, 11.47 a.m. Woo! Take these on off of here, these, these old headphones. I don't, I don't need to hear me today. I need to look at me. I'm looking, I'm just, I'm, I'm feeling like Zell May say. Looking clean, looking cute, looking sexy. How everybody doing? I'm so happy to come to y'all, come be back doing what I love to do. Uh, Man, what a week. There's been a lot going on. A lot of positive things have been going on. You know, I'm very excited today. I'm very excited. I'm excited that we got a new Tyler, the Creator album coming out in, in hours. I believe it comes out on Friday. I'm very excited for this, man. If y'all know me, I, I'm a huge Tyler, the Creator fan. Huge Tyler, the Creator fan. Um, it started off, uh, my, my, my love for Tyler, it started off, I heard, uh, go them rubbers in them dental pockets. In my waist, there's a black, but but you know that's Frank Ocean part. But I first heard that, and the beat to that song reminded me of the Neptunes. Now, if you know me, I love me some Neptunes. I love Pharrell. I love all them. I apologize. I was saying if that's a dog hair on the on my microphone. I think it's on my screen. But look, so <laughs> so I love I love the Neptunes. I love the Neptunes, and it sounded his his beats and his his scents and his chords and stuff. They reminded me of the Neptune. So I, I would go on and listen to Bastard and everything else that came out in between. My Lord. Man, Tyler Creator is just great. I, I, lo I love his sound. And so he he just migrated. You know, he just, he, well, not migrated. He just kept on evolving as an artist. Like, he didn't just stop there and do all the like, because we know he has some very questionable lyrics, but hell, it was 2009. It was 2008. It, it, it was a lot of questionable things going on back in them days. A lot of questionable lyrics. Things were allowed to fly back then that would not fly now. But I'm glad that that's not being held against him at this point because man, he would go on to make some 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 great music. Uh, the next one was was that Wolf was Wolf after Bastard. That was a it was like so. Now we're seeing him play the piano. Like the, the beginning of that whole album is the the whole F U doom 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 I love that. I love that part. That was great. And then one of my favorite songs that he ever done, I F and Hate You. I love it. I F I F H Y. I love that song so much. And then he had the nerve again to do something great. He brought on Pharrell. He brought Pharrell onto the to the to the to that uh to that song, to that record. And come on, baby. You know I hate you. I still love you. I love you. Oh, I, I love that song. Because it was like, for okay, here's another thing. Deep down inside, I feel like Tyler, the creator. Like, like I, I deep down inside, at that point in my life, like he was making the music I would have made when when I was in high school, he made that kind of music, like especially the subject matter. It was about like like chicks dissing you, and you not being a you being a nerd, but you know what I'm saying. And like that resonated with me. Like I always wanted a skateboard, but pff, they was gonna make fun of me. It was it was like the 2000s, and like you know, I didn't start skating until like 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 trying to skate for real for real until I met my homies from Lafayette in like 2014. Shout out to Lafayette. But I, but like you know, I was dibbling and dabbling skating, but cats riding by, riding their bikes, you know, cats for the projects riding their bikes. Got something to say about the cat, about the black dude skating. So he made a lot of things cool, which is also why I love Kanye West. I, I, his fashion sense, uh, especially you know, leading up to now, he, huge influence, huge influence. I was like, black kids can be what they want to be, and that's why we love Tyler Creator so much. Uh, after after that came out, I mean, we got we got Igor in there. Igor was great, and it was, he like, but no album sounds the same. He's just evolving. So now he's got a new one called Call Me If You Get Lost, and he's got this phone number ad thing going on. He's got all this cool stuff going on. I'm, I'm super excited um, as far as, like, some of the snippets that he's giving us. Like, the first one, he was just doing that, hey, I'm Tyler the Rapper. I I can I got bars. This, this, is, this is a song for the bars. All right, cool, cool. We cool. We cool with that. That's fine. But I'm here for the 
then meet me meet me at the lakes meet me by the lake i'm here for that tyler creator i'm here for the i f and hate you uh tyler creator i'm here for the can we be friends can we be friends i, I like that i like that song a whole lot uh, what up? oh when love is gone uh or gone it's called gone and then you have the bridge that's in there um where then he starts to rap you know it's poison in that gumbo that part the core is in there and that 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 bridge is so pretty i love it so much so i'm very excited for this album uh he gave us a couple of snippets you know um again there was a part where he had some cool because he was he's been playing around with that whole luxury 60s golf family thing um i, I guess that's where that that era uh 60s 70s like old school golf i like kind of attire and wear like it's a classic vintage feel <laughs> like some baggy slack kind of thing um something you would see on happy days or something like that but that's been the swag that he's been kind of doing and i'm, I'm here for it I, I love it i i don't know i could pull it off obviously but i'm still into the tiny pants there tiny pants tiny shorts there i'm still i'm still here for that so uh definitely he hit us with some of them like some of the stuff you were here it's really somebody it's really somebody I love, I love the, I love samba. Sambas are great. Dun, 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 dun. And then you got the trumpets and dun, dun, dun. you know, it, it's like a real smooth, like, you know, you got a cigarette and a cognac and you just enjoy yourself. I love, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Um, so we'll see what happens. We'll see if Tyler gets the girl, if he takes the girl away from Taco, because it looks like in the snippets, Taco is his opponent and i'm excited to see how this album goes i'm probably gonna give it a 10 out of 10 because the dude has been doing nothing but growing from a from a sound and instrumental point and i love that i'm here for that i love the sound and the direction he's been going um moving on it is summer shout out to my boy Gotti. he in there getting some water um but yeah let's move on let's move on so first off first off man this is the whole main point. I'm getting into the point of this of this particular episode now. We are watching some young brothers take this NBA by storm. We are watching some young cats go out there and be great and be great on their own. Um, it, I'm just I'm just here for it. I love it. We're watching Devin Booker just do great things. We're watching. Uh, what's that boy name? Man, well, I can't think of his name. I'm sorry. So we're watching Trey Young do his thing with the Hawks, doing what nobody expected him to do. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's let's talk for a second. Got to get out, boy. Uh, <laughs> my apologies. You know my dog. He like to come in here and he'll get the licking and be sounding. Yeah, just got it. Exit. Go over and lay down with your son, please. Thank you, sir. So at any rate, we are here to talk about greatness. What is this greatness? We're watching Trey Young do what nobody has expected him to do, which is carry a team, which bolsters a roster of uh, 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 Kevin Herter, um, Clint Capella, that that uh, that Collins boy. I mean, it's, I mean, it's not a, a star-studded team. You even got Lemon Pepper Lou on the squad, and only, he's not even getting very much run, and he's not doing all that cool six man of the year stuff he's been doing. These, not in these playoffs. It's been all Trey Young, and he's getting help. His teammates are helping, but I mean, dude is doing like so. You have New York. He's going against New York. They're talking about uh, what's that boy named Julius Randle. They talking about Julius Randle is supposed to be one of the the MVPs uh, in the MVP conversation. Luckily, they didn't see him. But Trey goes out there, he beats them in this series, and he leaves his mark in New York to where they like, F that dude, we do not like him. Then the next step, he goes to Philadelphia, goes to game seven. You got Ben Simmons there. That's a whole nother thing. Listen to me and Lay Alpha, uh, Azel May. Watch, watch that episode about how we break down Ben Simmons and what's going on with him. But shout out to MB, a very valiant effort, but... Not enough at the end of the day. Trey Young goes and beats them. He and, and then he leaves his mark in Philadelphia. Philadelphia is not they they they, they was burning burning his jersey and all type of stuff, along with Ben Simmons' jersey. But the, again, another topic for another day. Also, now he's in Milwaukee. Game one puts up 48 points, 
like 11 assists and like seven rebounds, nine rebounds, something like that. Almost has a triple double. And it was so quiet. It was a quiet 48. So I'm looking for, for Trey Young to continue to battle and get there and do the best that like I continue to I, I want to I'm, I, I, I know that I'm going to continue to see him do great in these playoffs. He's 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 done nothing but be great this whole time. I love it. Now, on the West, West side of things, Devin Booker, Devin Booker. That's a tough role. That's a tough role playing in the West. It's a tough road. OK, you get you got to, you got to beat up Lakers in round one. OK, no problem. No problem. Then the second round, you get the Nuggets. I can't remember who it was. Oh yeah, you get Jokic in them, I believe. But you know they don't have they don't have Murray in them, so they get them out of there. I can, I'm sorry, I can't remember who they who they played last. And then yeah 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 yeah, it's Denver. Yeah, they got they got he got the MVP up out of there, right? Jokic was the was that's your MVP, correct? Next up. They hit you with this. They say <laughs> they say Chris Paul is in COVID protocol. I think it's because of, of a positive, but it was a, like a but and he mind you he's been vaccinated, so that's something to think about too. But you got you got Devin Booker based, essentially playing without Chris Paul for two for the first two games against the Clippers. What happens? Devin Booker wins. They he, he wins those games, and he's by almost having a triple double or having a triple double. He's scoring forty plus points. He's getting everybody involved. He's being a scorer and a facilitator, and he's leading a team. He's playing great. Mid range jumper looks amazing. So tonight, game three, uh, game three is going to be uh, against uh, the Clippers, and we know Kawhi is hurt. That is what it is. But man. That Booker boy is something special. He's something special. And I'm just I'm just super duper excited about these two young men. Why am I saying that? Because they're part of, see, we talk so much about the coaching tree. We talk so much about, about Andy Reid and NFL. We talk about the people that go off to be head coaches because they was under Andy Reid. We go off and, and, and we talk about Bill Belichick and the people that, that are on Bill Belichick's staff at some point. They go on to become, they go on to become head coaches somewhere or they become great defensive coordinators or offensive coordinators but they never leave the league because they was a part of that coaching tree well i got a new tree for you i got a new tree for everybody it's the kobe tree you know sadly enough we lost kobe Bryant. we lost him and he was in the he was in he was in guru mode he was in guru mode. He was in, he was in, you know, that monk that everybody wants to go see and, and just to get a piece of his brain and how he operates and, you know, going through what he went through, what he would, what he would uh, offer to the, to, to the, to the future. This is, this is, this is great. This is history. And I love it. I love how my dogs get thirsty in the middle of, of my soliloquy. My bad. Sorry. My dogs, they ruined all of my soliloquies. My apologies. So we talk so much about coaching trees, Bill Belichick and uh, how how people come off of his coaching, off of his coaching roster and all that stuff. They go off into the league and become head coaches. We talk about Andy Reid and the people that have been on his staff. They go off to go off to become great coordinators and offensive coordinators and, and, and head coaches. But I'm here to talk about a different tree. I'm here to talk about the Kobe tree. Now, we lost Kobe Bryant tragically. I hate it. And he was like at the point where he was like this Zen guru. He was this 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 hidden monk that you everybody wanted to go see. He was he was just. He was at the point where he was giving. So much knowledge and passing off to the future because he had been through it. And so he was at a point in his life where he was starting to pass down, pass down what he's learned from what he's been through. Maybe some things he would have did differently. And he's he's passing down, you know, his work ethic. He's passing all these things down and then we tragically lose them. But there's a group of kids that Kobe took under his wing. And they're in the NBA being great. Trey Young is one of them. 
Devin Booker is another. And let's not forget about, about Tatum. These dudes are 40, walking 40 points. They're amazing basketball players. They're not just scorers. It's great that they're great scorers, but they're also great basketball players. And that's something that we have to keep, we have to look at this. Kobe, but I, I, what I want to say is this. I call it the Kobe tree because his influence, his influence is seen everywhere. Even though he's gone, he's passed down things to people that they carry with them to this day. Tatum, Young, Booker, they all had time with him. Even Kawhi, Kawhi is off of that. Kawhi is out off of that, off of that, that coaching tree, that Kobe tree. He's off of that. I don't know what he's passing on, but he's passing something on. It's just he might it might be like radio waves and stuff. I don't know. But at any rate, he's passing it on. And that's what's so great about Kobe's coaching tree because it doesn't just affect basketball players. It affects everybody. Everybody that Kobe has touched, it affects me. I don't hoop. I'm not a professional ball player, but wanting to grind and be great at your craft. And, and 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 do the best that you can and knowing that that you can that you can overcome that's Kobe Bryant that's the Kobe tree it's not just basketball players it's a lot of people I'm not the only person that looks up to Kobe in that way I'm not the only person that does that there's other people in this world that do that as well <sighs> Kobe has so much to give us so much left to give. Kobe has so much left to give, but it is what it is. But he, I think that I think Kobe left enough. Kobe Bryant left enough, and he left enough on all of us so that we could become great people, and we could pass on the Mamba mentality. We can pass on some of the things that he's taught us. I don't have any. I never even met Kobe Kobe Bryant in person, but I do know that he's left his imprint. Oof. He left. He, he just punched me with his microphone. By the way, he said, "Do better." Um, he left his imprint on me, and I'm not the only one. So that's what I say with the Kobe tree. The Kobe tree is big. Y'all have you seen Dragon Ball Z tree? And Mike, that's how big the Kobe tree is. So many people have drawn and learned so many lessons from him, and we got to continue to make the, to let those branches grow. And that's what we're watching right here in the NBA right now. We're watching two. One got put out pretty early, but he was putting up 40, 50 point games. He wasn't going out like a like a scrub. He played great games. But Tatum, he's out. But we still got two dudes and they destined to duke it out. And them is them is Kobe's boys. Them is Kobe's boys. And that's the Kobe tree. All right. Uh let's 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 get into a little bit of entertainment here. Loki. Loki. I am here for Loki. I love this series. I love this show because, you know, I like hero stuff. I like hero stuff. I like I like their powers. I like that they fight and beat up bad guys. I love all that. I'm here for it. I love it. But there's a there's a there's something about making you think. Like, why are they fighting? Okay, they robbed a bank, so you stopped them from robbing a bank. That's cool. No, the inner psyche of these heroes that we that we that we've grown to love so much. Like, I'm. I love this. I love. It's such a like. So Loki's basically a time detective guy, trying to find him a variant of himself. He's trying to stop this alternate version of himself. It's this whole uh, multiverse thing, and like everything is supposed to be a straight line. If it if it if it goes off just a little bit, then like you get caught by these time police. Like if you're late to work and you weren't supposed to be late to work, you become like a time terrorist, and it's like crazy. That's the whole premise of this show is just basically Loki is trying to, he became a time terrorist because he wasn't supposed to get the Tesseract and escape uh, when he was with the Avengers. And then uh, he gets caught, blah, he gets caught. And then there, apparently there's somebody else that's running around time and doing stuff. I like what Disney is doing. Like they're making different genres, like based off of the heroes. 
like it's it's there's a little action but they're making different genres like you got a little action with falcon and winter, winter soldier okay but you also got a couple you got a little bit about you know racism and stuff you got a little bit in there about the social issues uh you get that wandavision joint that's more of a comedy but it turned into like you know showing you other stuff but at the end of the day I mean, that was just a cool little flick. That was cool. Like, it wasn't all about action. I don't think you get into, like, any huge fight scenes until the final episode. But you just intrigued and enthralled in, like, this 30 minutes of why in the hell is Wanda and Malcolm in the middle? I don't understand. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, we're seeing that. And almost, in a sense, getting a glimpse of some of the multiverse stuff. Even though it's not just Wanda's just, Wanda's just being Wanda, being crazy and creating realities, which is insane. I love, I, I, but you got Loki. Loki's, he's smart. He's cunning. And they use that to make a, a series. It's not so much about him, you know, taking over the world or whatever, but there is probably some chess match. You're looking at every single move that Loki makes. And it's like, how much does Loki really know? What's his true end goal? Is he really trying to save, save the world? We don't know that stuff. And that's what makes, that's what makes this, this series so great because it's making me think like, what's going to happen? Is there meaning to why he did this? Is there meaning to why they did that? Because again, he's going against himself and he's trying to, and they're doing this whole psychology thing. Oh, Owen Wilson, Wilson, he's, he's supposed to be playing Mobius. Um, one of the other time detective guys. And he's like, I don't know. It's just dope. I don't know. It's just dope. Make sure y'all watch that shit, man, because it's 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 amazing. Um, it, I'm I'm all I'm all for that. Make me think, kind of stuff. Like I, I get it. He's got powers, but like there's a real story going on here. So definitely check that out. Also, we got the season five premiere of Rick and Morty. Super excited um, to watch episode one. It was pretty cool. We bet some guy. What's his name? Nimbus, Mister Nimbus, and apparently. Him and Rick been beefing for years, and they had a treaty where he wasn't supposed to ever go into the ocean, blah, blah, blah. They in, they into it, going through it, whatever, whatever. Um, so they invite him over to start a new treaty, and they're eating at the house, and he invites uh, Jerry and Beth, who are Morty's parents, invites them to a threesome, and blah, blah, blah. So that's going on. That's a whole storyline in itself. But most importantly, when Morty was on his deathbed, well, about to be in a death experience, He called Jessica. He finally called Jessica. And after, you know, he finally was like, hey, this is how I feel. I think you're dope. And, Je and, and Jessica was like, hey, I do too. So maybe we can watch movies. So that, that that inspires Maury to make it out of this dire situation. He does. So that gets, uh, that gets, that gets Morty to invite her over to the house. They're watching a movie, whatever. So he finally getting his, his shot with Jessica. Well, Jessica goes through like, like he's, she wants, she finds out that there's wine and she's like, Morty, get some wine. And so he's going back and forth in this portal, trying to get this wine and Nimbus, Mr. Nimbus is being his dick the whole time. It's crazy. It's a watch it. But at the end of the day, just know that Jess, Jessica becomes a time Lord. So just based off of what I just told you about wine and Mr. Nimbus, who controls the police, by the way, um, he's like, he's like this super sexual Aquaman, skinny Aquaman. It's crazy. But apparently he, he he controls the police and it's that's random uh roiling stuff so that is what that is so i'm 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 excited to see where this series is going just know that morty has to go morty morty goes full on badass at one point he's grown a lot since season 1 just know that he's got more balls than he had in season 1 um lastly um, I just want to say I, I've been playing Trunks DLC, and when I say been playing, I played it one time, and I've not been back to it. I was so excited about Trunks DLC, but it's not bringing me. I, I don't feel the need to play it because, like, there's this really tedious part, which is the majority of it, flying and traveling from wherever place to place. It's annoying because there's all these little alert Android things, and they're small and like. You can, of course, defeat them and shoot them with blast from far away, but it's annoying and tedious. But if you get alerted enough, then the androids come and fight you. And then I haven't even been in a situation where I fight them. But at some point, basically, you're supposed to get both of their both of their um, hit points down low enough to where you get an opportunity to escape um, because you're not strong enough yet. It's, so it's you and Gohan. And this is before Gohan got I'm at the part where even if you've seen the movie, Gohan didn't lose his arm yet. 
So he Trunks is kind of like training to become a Super Saiyan kind of thing. That's where you start the story off. Um, so yeah, there's so many there's so many questions about Gohan in that time period and how he wasn't strong enough to beat the androids eventually. But uh, it is it is what it is. We can talk about that later. But at this point, I just don't feel like playing it. Like it's too tedious at this point. It's like uh, I want to travel. Uh, ooh. I wanted to, I wanted some somebody to drop something off the truck, but I wanted I wanted to play it. I was super excited, but this whole like little bitty android thing, alert androids bothering you every five seconds, and you gotta they basically want you to keep on getting into shit with the androids, and I I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll finish it and I'll, I'll give you um, an update. Now, ladies, if you're looking for somebody that's gonna always find a way to come back to you. Look no further than me. Go to ChristianMingle.com. That's right. It's your boy Barswala Mew. He'll look up Barswala Mew on ChristianMingle.com. <laughs> it's going down. You know how I do. Yeah, you don't got to worry about no androids coming with me. You don't need no learned androids coming because I'm going to tell you I'm coming. I'm on the way. Also, uh, make sure you look your boy up. Uh, we, I'm on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, SoundCloud. That's right, mama. I'm on Spotify. Overall, 99 ENT. You can catch us all week putting up videos we also have overall 99 ent on all listening platforms we have so many shows what's what's the trend what's new 99 keeping 99 uh 99 sports we got all type of stuff we got some content for you all the time so if you're watching this 100 thank you for watching if you're listening thank you for tuning in to another episode of do you hear me mm -hmm. with unico williams i holla <laughs> Thanks for watching. Make sure you follow me on all my social media platforms. Don't forget, every Thursday, the full podcast is on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Mama, I'm on Spotify. Overall 99 ENT bring you videos from Friday all the way to Friday. So be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate it. Again, thank you so much. I holla.